Well, here we go again with a problem with a common external tangent segment. We're going to solve for the length of the red segment, wy, which happens to be externally tangent to at the points w and y to the two given circles a and b, which happen to be externally tangent to each other. Um, well, let's just have a quick review of what externally or an external tangent between two circles looks like, and then we'll come back to this problem. Ready? Let's go. Well, the common external tangent, as you can see in this example, JK, and well, it's tangent to both these two circles where the red are the radii, and of course, perpendicular at the point of tangencies, which is J and K. Now, um, we experimented with this in class and we moved around. Um, we construct these figures. Notice in this example, the circles might be externally tangent, but the circles might not even intersect at all. Or the circles may have two points of intersection. They may be overlapping circles. In either case, this would qualify as a this JK is common external tangent. If I talk about this segment, I'm speaking of an ex uh, external tangent segment. Um, interesting properties: if two in a plane, if two lines are parallel to the same line, or perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel. And as a result, this figure would be a trapezoid. That may come in handy. All right, back to the problem. Okay, we're back now, and let's have a look at this specific problem. Right here, um, let's suppose I was given one radius is 10. Well, if I know one radius, then I know the other. And because these two, of course, must be additive in this particular case. And we take advantage of our earlier theorem saying that the tangent must be perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So you can see the resultant trapezoid. And we carve that trapezoid up into a rectangle and a triangle. And now knowing our properties of our figures, we just drew this auxiliary line here. Why? Because we can. And we're now going to solve for this orange side. If I focus on this triangle, I can solve for this orange side, which must be congruent to this red side, and this red segment is our common external tangent. All right, so we're going to do this two ways. All right, sharpen your pencils. Well, all right, it's old school. We'll just call this side B, and we'll use the Pythagorean theorem and set it up, simplify. Subtract 225 from both sides, the square root of 1,000. Now, this is where I guess you're, you're going to do several different ways. Let's suppose you are a, we, we all know that's the square root of 1,000. If you're going to go for a calculator, if you just want a decimal answer, you're going to get a, a little bit, or right around 31 and 6 tenths. However, your teacher, including me, probably wants you to show it in simplified radical form as well. This is a pretty easy one because a thousand can clearly be factored into 110, which would simplify to 10 radical 10. So if this side is 10 radical 10, so is this side, which is the decimal equivalent or has the decimal equivalent of about 31 and 6 tenths. All right, and well, we have to show the reduced triangle principle. Even though this one was pretty easy, let's let's do this one another way. And let's go back and say, remember, if I take this triangle and I factor out the common five, I could then solve for this triangle on this different scale. And as you can see, I now have square root of 40. However, square root of 40 is still not in simplified radical form because it contains a factor of 4 and 10. So you need to recognize that's 2 radical 10. But if that's 2 radical 10, this side represents 2 radical 10. And what I'm going to do is multiply that by back by the scale factor of 5. And that again gives me 10 radical 10. So either way, you'll find that in this example, we have 10 radical 10 for wy, which is the common external tangent, and we're done.